burn myself. Look at this. Oh my goodness. This smells awesome. Look at this. Can you smell it? Oh Lord. Hello my friends. Welcome back to Cafe Bagheri. Not a Cafe Bagheri kitchen yet because we still have our kitchen remodeling project going on next door for another month or so. In the meantime, we've been living, cooking uh, out of this family room that used to be my son's uh, music recording studio. Um, it's Studio Esfahan is what we called it. So today we're going back to a regional dish. Uh, like all the recipes that I feature on this channel, this one is also one that I absolutely love. It's one of my favorites. Carne yarik is a dish of stuffed eggplants, Turkish in origin, literally translates to split belly. Of course, um, eggplants are patlajan in Turkish language, badamjan in Farsi. This dish has versions throughout Mediterranean and Iran and, and Central Asia, but this one is Turkish. Interestingly, the first time I tasted this dish was on a Turkish Airlines Transcon going east uh, to Istanbul and Iran, and they served it. It was wonderful. I fell in love with this dish. It was years ago. The way they served it, they had uh, rice and a little salad next to it, and that's how I always serve karniyarik with Persian saffron rice and a little Shirazi salad, and I love it. I think you will love this dish and make it, and so stick around. Let's make some karniyarik together. All right, let's start by preparing our eggplants, which are also called aubergines. If you want to sound kind of studious and, and educated, you can call them aubergines, but they're really eggplants, right? I have three large eggplants and we're going to cut them in half and each one's going to feed two people. You can use Chinese or Japanese eggplants, but these are my preferred ones because the portion that it produces is just perfect for two people per eggplant. Start by removing the green cap on the stem side of the eggplant. What I do is I just cut a ring around this way and then remove these leaves, these little triangular shapes that are coming down from the stem. Just cut through them. You can leave the, the green cap on it. So I'm going to do all three of them. So leaving this little bit of green cap on there helps to hold the half eggplant together later. Next, we're going to skin the eggplant in, in bands, in strips, serves two purposes. One is it exposes some of the flesh on the side of this eggplant that's going to have skin on it so that the salt and the olive oil and whatever you're applying, it also has a chance to penetrate the flesh of eggplant on the skin side. And leaving some of the skin on also serves a purpose. As you can see, it has connectivity. It holds the eggplant together at the end. When you're serving it, it, it holds it together so it won't completely disintegrate. So this is what we are looking for. Now, for each of these, I'm going to go right in the middle and split it in half. This is what you're looking for. There you go. Now we're going to salt the eggplants. The common belief for preparing eggplants, not just for this dish, for many eggplant dishes is that you salt them to get rid of bitterness. That is really not true. The modern eggplant that is sold throughout the world, they have bred out the bitterness from most species that are sold in, in all continents. So the salting really does, is not necessary for fresh eggplants. Uh, but it serves a couple of more critical purposes. One is, as you know, salt will dry out moisture uh, coming into contact with anything, including your vegetables and, and meats. So especially for eggplants that have been sitting in your refrigerator or on the counter for a few days after you get them from the market, 
you know how they get limp and a little older, put in salt on them for about 30 minutes before you start cooking them. It draws out some of the moisture and then the final product, when you cook it in the oven or in oil or whatever, it will be um, firmer when you cook it. The other obvious reason for salting your eggplants is like when you uh, brine anything, meat or vegetables in salt brine, um, it actually adds to the flavor. So in my book, uh, getting rid of bitterness is really not that big a deal. They will gradually start sweating and the, the water start gathering in the tray that we put under it. That's why I'm gonna put a little towel or paper towel under this rack to absorb some of the moisture and it won't puddle in your pan. Now we're going to make our filling for the carniara. Uh, it's mainly ground beef. You can use ground lamb or turkey if you like. We're gonna start with a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Again, you, you've seen me usually uh, use neutral vegetable oil, not in this case. This is a very Mediterranean dish and you wanna use olive oil for this. I'm on medium high and I wanna go for about a minute plus until the oil starts shimmering and you can feel the heat coming up from the oil. Once the oil is hot, we're gonna put our minced onions in there. This is about a medium sized onion and I've chopped it or minced it. I spared you the video of me chopping the onion or everything else. I've done that enough on video for you. So we're going to push this onion around occasionally until it's translucent. We don't want to go to golden brown or, or changing color. Just make sure it's translucent and it's cooked a little bit for a couple of minutes. Okay, our onion is where I want it to be. As you can see, it's a little translucent. I have about three small garlic cloves. Um, chopped fine and we add it. If you don't like garlic or are allergic, you can skip garlic. All right, we stirred the garlic about one to two minutes. So it distributes with the onion. Now we're gonna add our meat. As I told you before, this can be ground beef, lamb, or turkey. I prefer um, ground beef with this dish and it's got less than 10% of fat. You've seen me use 80-20 for Kubide and other uses. You want less fat in this because you don't want a puddle of fat to form when you're putting it in the eggplant. Um, this is 93.7, I believe, uh, so go less than 10% fat for this. For breaking up the beef in, um, in most applications, I have this potato masher that I use. There are other things you can use. So once you've got about a minute's worth of cooking on one side, you go to town with this thing and you use your spatula to mix it with garlic and onion. Okay, we're still on medium high, waiting for it to change color. Once all of the meat has turned color and you see very little pink in it, then we proceed to the next stage. I'm gonna use the potato masher a little more. The longer it cooks, the easier it breaks up. So do the breaking up two to three times. We're slowly changing color here. I'm gonna do one more run with my potato masher. I see some clumps in there. Okay, our meat has completely changed color. I don't see any pink. This is the time when we add our spices. I have salt, I have black pepper. I have some smoked paprika, which is very Turkish, very Mediterranean. And I'll put a little bit of cayenne for heat. You can do chipotle. Um, if you don't want any heat in this dish, you can um, 
skip it all together. My signature is a little bit of heat in my dishes, and this is just less than a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You decide if you want to add it or not. Now I am going to cover this skillet. I've reduced it to low. We're going to let this go for about five, six minutes, and the meat and onion will let go of some of the moisture, and we're going to stir it a couple of times during that time. Then we're going to proceed to the next stage when we add some vegetables and tomatoes. It's been going for a couple of minutes. As you can see, we got some moisture gathered in there. We're going to stir it once. Oh, this already smells awesome. Look at this. All right, it's been five minutes. We're going to add our finely minced green and red. We're adding our finely minced green and red bell peppers. If you don't have red or green bell peppers, it's okay. You can use one or the other. I think it adds to the presentation to have both of them, red and green bell peppers. And do a little stir. Then we're going to add our cup worth of finely minced tomatoes. I use Roma tomatoes. You can use any kind of tomatoes you have. You don't need to skin the tomatoes or anything like that. Now we've gone back on medium high for this phase. Immediately after the peppers and tomato has been added, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of tomato paste. A reminder again that like all my videos, the recipe with details is down in the first comment that we pin. So it will always stay up for you to see. Just go under this video on YouTube and the recipe will be right there. All right, at this point, we're gonna make sure we're back on low. We're gonna cover the pan and let it cook and simmer in a little bit of juice that it has in there for about five minutes. And then we'll come back and finish our filling. We've had about six minutes actually. I added a minute because there was a little too much liquid in the sauce. So five, six minutes, this is where we are. At this point, I turn off the heat and add our chopped parsley into the sauce. By the way, we're gonna add some parsley as garnish on the final dish when we are serving it as well. There we go. Now this is ready to sit and wait for us to deal with our eggplants. Aubergines. There you go. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup. Here, as you can see, the eggplants that were salted about 40 minutes ago. Oh, look at this, they're oozing. Get some paper towel and literally dry the eggplants like they just came out of the shower. Look at this. This is what salt does to vegetables. Look at this. Paper towel is just drenched under. That's how much juice came out of this. Now that we've pad dried the eggplants, we're gonna use a little knife to score them just like this, three or four lines about quarter inch in. This is for the purpose of the oil penetrating and cooking your eggplant in the next stage. Now we're going to apply the olive oil on all six of them and spread it using a brush. I put about one tablespoon worth of olive oil on each eggplant. If you've watched my Kashke Badem Jun or and uh, Mirza Qasemi videos, I choose not to fry the eggplants in those videos either, and the results are magnificent. So you really don't need to fry eggplants to get good taste out of them. Just 
brush them with some olive oil and put them in the oven and roast them for about 30 minutes. We're gonna do that in a minute at 430 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's a fun little detail for the next phase. We are going to roast our eggplants to get them ready. But of course, I told you I don't have my ovens. They're disconnected and put back there. So our sister-in-law, Sarah Tarvin, introduced us to this little marvel. It's by the famous um, TV brand called Ninja. Uh, and it's a air fryer, toaster, oven com combination. It's wonderful. No, they're not paying me a consideration for promoting their product, but I think it's just so smart. Look at this. So I'm gonna power it on, and then decide I'm gonna bake, right? That's what we're doing. We're gonna go to temperature, which is 430. It's in our recipe. And basically, we go preheat. La, la, la. <laughs> Look at that. So we open the door, and in goes our I use a pan that comes with the thing. I always wrap your uh, pans in foil so the cleanup is much easier. Just push it all the way in. How easy is that? And then you close it. Now, timer. Now we're going to set the time. We go for 25 minutes and start. We're in business. All right. Let's see our eggplants cooked for a total of 25 minutes. You know what, I, I can still let it go for another four or five minutes. So we're gonna put it back in for five minutes. Here. Okay, while that's going on, we're gonna make our sauce. This is the tomato sauce that goes, that we drizzle all over each of the eggplants and around in the pan. Uh, you can go two ways. You can use tomato paste and water and salt and pepper but guess what tomato paste and water gives you tomato sauce about a cup and a half of that and this is about a cup and a half i'm going to add a little bit of water to thin this out like so All right, the last five minutes is over. So the eggplants have been roasting for a total of 30 minutes at 430 degrees. Perfectly ready. I propose we wait about five minutes so they're a little cooler so we can work on it. Just give it a little mix. So this is close to room temperature because we made this while back. I think we have uh, loaded enough onto them. What do you think? That's good. Yeah, that's enough for one person on each. Here, just make sure they're compacted in a little bit. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We just put some of this meat here around these. And that makes great sauce for dipping your bread or your crostinis in. So now we bring our sauce. This, remember, was about a cup and a half of tomato sauce. If you don't have tomato sauce, you can do um, tomato paste and water. Here, go a little bit like this on each of them. So 
we'll make sure we don't miss this one. There. Okay, now I can. There you go. Okay. I'm going to kind of shake this to make sure the liquid settles. We're ready to go back in. The oven is still hot, as you can see. We're gonna push this in. So this is pretty much ready to go for the final stretch. And time, I'm gonna do for 25 minutes. This is ready, so we're gonna basically, I'm gonna stop this. We're done. Careful not to burn myself. Look at this. Oh my goodness. This smells awesome. Look at this. Can you smell it? Oh Lord. So here is enough carniaric for six people and extra sauce. We're gonna get some of this juice because I'm gonna serve this one. I'll push all of this back to kind of make it a little prettier. Let's see if I can lift this without damaging anything. There you go. So we go right here. And I usually kind of clear a margin around the mound in the middle to make it a little prettier. There you go. And you can put some sauce under it or just around it. And because you need something cool and crisp to go with this, I like our own Shirazi. Just enough to give it some crisp contrast and some crunch. You don't need a lot of that. And look at how pretty that becomes. Always make sure you wipe clean the margins around your food on the plate. The people who eat your food will appreciate it. I do have some more chopped parsley that I put on the carniaric, like so. There, a couple more here. And there you have it. Here's our Turkish stuffed aubergine eggplant carniaric with Persian saffron rice and Shirazi, both of which we have videos for. Please check them out if you haven't watched them already. Thank you for being with me for this wonderful um, experience. It's truly uh, something that you need to try at home. When you do, please uh, make a story out of it or post it on Instagram and tag me at Cafe Bagheri and I'll give you a shout out and feature it on my page. Um, if you like this video, what you saw today, please like this video and share it on your social media with friends and family. I really appreciate it. That helps us a lot. Uh, comment below and that will help uh, promote our video and, and, and put it out there for more people to see. If you've not subscribed yet, uh, this is the obligatory plea to please subscribe and hit that little bell button so you can keep in touch and get notifications when there's new stuff happening around here. Thanks again for being with me and I'll see you very soon right here at Cafe Bagheri, hopefully in our new kitchen. Okay, we'll see you soon. You feel me? Lights in the way. It's okay. Check this out. This is the best way to eat this. I mean, Persian rice is on different level with this dish, but just this tender, awesome eggplant dip that you end up with, like so. Mm.